Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and you can also find my blogs on ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. So today I want to talk about how to discover a new rally and the reason I want to get deep into that is as we try to uh, make a, a low in the market after an extreme pullback of 30% for the NASDAQ and 20% for the S&P 500 uh, really since the beginning of the year. It's been a pretty big move. So today I want to discuss coming off the lows, what changes are happening, how to see them, and, and then use three different tools to try and help demonstrate different ways that we can analyze the market to see what is working. And if you're interested in the tools I have at Osprey Strategic, I always have my Schnell Strength Index. That kind of gets you in the mood to get ready for a market to turn up. And then as the market starts to go, um, I kind of um, try to make sure that the clients are aware of the change in the tone of the market and are getting ready to get long or are starting to get long with close stops and that kind of thing. One of the big keys to doing really well in the market is to kind of get in near the lows um, so you can have your stop relatively close. And then um, in my case, what we like to do is staircase up. So we are in the market while it's rising, out of the market while it's going down, in the market while it's rising and out of the market when it's going down. And, and that way you try to keep your capital basically making a stair step higher. Um, if that's something that's interesting to you, you could head over to ospreystrategic.org for, for just $860. It's uh, less than 20 bucks a week. Um, you're going to be able to, um, you know, at least be aware of when the market's getting risky or getting aware when the market's ready to start trying to turn higher. And um, we'll, we'll try to keep you on top of that. Or you could try one month for just $7. I'm not sure that's enough time frame to do it, but it'll give you um, some of the ideas that we start to work forward on. Okay, let's jump on over into the, the specific charts. And what I want to cover off today is, uh, first of all, one of the things to look for is the market summary. And how do you get to the market summary? Well, from your dashboard, uh, this basically, on the dashboard, it gives you the percentages of what was changing. But we can go in uh, to the market summary, and the way we do that is it's down here right at the bottom. We're going to click on this tab. And when we go there, it takes us in. Now, this does a better job of giving us a broader view as we scroll through these different areas of the market. So one thing I like to notice is what is outperforming. And so as an example, here's the NASDAQ Composite outperforming the Dow Industrials. And again, the Dow Industrials are 30 stocks and there's Tesla, or there's Microsoft and Apple and um and Intel and a couple of other uh, Salesforce.com are in there, Chevron. So it's kind of 30 hand-selected companies, way different than the broad market indexes, like in this case, the NASDAQ Composite up 2.76. And here's the, um, you know, if, if you go look around the world, we're starting to see what else is going on. But this at least gives us an idea where the market um, found its action. And for me, most of it was in technology or biotech um, compared to, say, the Dow Jones Industrial. And then when we just want to look through at different um, groups, you can see the Wilshire 5000 was up 2% on the day. That's pretty big. Uh, so, you, so you're watching just to see the flow, and we'll notice that utilities are one of the weakest areas of the market. That should happen when we're having a market rally. So the idea is that we want to move into growth, and away from, from defensive sectors. So what does that mean? Well, on this page, um, this is, uh, maybe I'll show you how to get here. So this is charts and tools, um, perf charts, and you're going to go in here and you're going to click on sector ETFs. And at the bottom of this, um, I mean, you can play with this whole top part, but for the purpose of our discussion right now, what I want to talk about is when the market is defensive, these kind of areas are leading. And when the market is in growth mode, these are typically the better areas of the market. Financials can kind of wander over to the other side every now and then. But in general, this is kind of the leadership groups and this is the defensive areas of the market. And what you see is when the stock market's declining, these stocks do well. And when the stock market's rising, these areas are doing better. So, okay, so let's go back to market summary. So when we check out how we're doing right now 
And again, this is based on one day, but we've got um, other tools I'll describe later um, where you can check performance over different periods of time. So here's the utilities up 1%. Here's communications beaten down really, really hard. Um, up 2%. Technology up 2.9. Materials up 2.83. So again, all of those names or all of those industry groups on the left-hand side um, doing pretty well. And all of the industry groups on the other side not doing as well. So that gives us just kind of clues about the direction of the market. So if we're starting to get more bullish, again, XLY, up 2.52 is the furthest on the left here. That's over here, discretionary. And so we want to see um, these names rapidly move up. And I think just, you know, generally looking at this is pretty much telling us what we want to see. We're starting to see a move towards risk on. And again, look at how deep this XLY has been beaten down. That's a pretty major move. And if we go to communication, same thing. So it's just starting to move off the bottom. And what we now need to see is that continue. And what we want to watch for is can this keep up? Okay. Um, so with that, now let's take it to the next level. I'm going to go in and show you specifically how we can use some of the other tools on stock charts to get that same sort of information. Okay, now let's get going on this concept. So what I want to cover off is the way the market makes its low and climbs out of the hole and what we want to watch for as the market is changing character. So we first of all, we need to be aware that the indexes are trying to change character. That That's one critical component. The next part of it is trying to capture what is ready to move higher. And so we can also trade stocks that are just breaking out to new highs and there's a whole theme around that. Or we can trade stocks that are turning up off what we would call oversold lows. And what does that mean? It means basically that the stocks have been sold off hard. They're down a long way and they can start to turn up. Technical trading can help us find some of these components as we uh, try to make the low in the market. So first of all, let me just set the background here. I'm going to uh, go with these different uh, market setups. So we have the NASDAQ 100. This is a 60-minute chart downtrending and starting to work its way higher. And then we have the daily view and things look still pretty depressed. The only thing I would say that we do have going for us is that the volume has really started to accelerate more on the NASDAQ than on the S&P 500. But nonetheless, we've had accelerating volume as we come into the low, suggesting there's been a lot of selling. And, and a lot of times that's what it takes is uh, the weekends kind of finally give it all up. And then as that, as we start to make the turn, um, some uh, bottom fishing or value investors start to look for it. So in this particular case, it's a few days after the low. We can already see that we've got an upturn on the full stochastic on a weekly chart. So that's a clue. I mean, when we look at the actual price action, it's hardly moved. Uh, but the, the weekly full stochastic is starting to turn up and give us a clue. The PPO is really helpful, but at this point, it would be one of the slower things to turn up. Again, on the daily chart, we've got this downtrend in in the PPO. And if that can start to turn higher and break out, that would be very bullish. And we see the same thing over here for the S&P 500. I like it when these big downtrend slopes break, like right in here and this pops higher. Same idea over here for the NASDAQ. When this long trend breaks, you want to get it. And it, it wasn't a, well, it was a pretty good rally. It was... Um, 10 or 15 percent in two or three weeks which i think is a pretty good rate of return but more importantly um, we want to try and set ourselves up to be ready near the bottom we don't want to kind of wait until it gets up into the mid-range up here and then say oh gee should we start to jump back in that's just a really hard place to get back into the market so with that as the backdrop let's go in and just oops look at what's going on on the dashboard so coming out of this hole, um, we're, we're watching a certain um, drift in the stocks. And what we want to talk about is how it's changing, what's structurally going on that would give us an idea of where we want to go back into. And what, what we can see here, 
if we look at the the U.S. market, this is tech, 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 Ford. Um, interesting. And then Walmart really got hit um, uh, on the day. So this is a defensive selling off. This is a bank, Citigroup. Here's Bank of America. Twitter. Um, and at the time here, we're still in the middle of the Elon Musk willy won't he buy the stock, buy the company. And then we have T for AT&T and Oxy for oil and gas. Now, when we go look at the percentage up, sometimes this, this can be a little odd, but let's take take two as an example. Building a very nice downtrend and then all of a sudden shooting higher. So you can see... Um, you know, moving up meaningfully 10%. But as we work through these different charts, oh, sorry about that. As we work through these different charts, what we want to see is whether or not um, the companies as they um, are making the turn can actually get going. And so what's more helpful, I'd really like to get rid of this box on my screen. Um, Here's Delta Airlines, American Airlines, United Airlines. So those three in this particular time. So they're all showing up on the percent up. And that's just a good place to look. Here's non-ferrous metals, Freeport MacMoran. And I, I to be frank, I, I would be surprised if this bounces here. If it does, then that's going to change a lot of my tempo. Because um, I actually thought the copper price was going to roll over. We'll see if that happens. Here's... Um, Sedge, which is the uh, Solar Edge company, Citigroup, and Selenese Corp. Um, a lot of the the names like this popping up quite high. Now, percent down, what we're probably going to see is more defensive names. And so here's Hershey and Tap, a beer company, and Target. So we've made a big move. Um, the stock market's made a big move down. All of these are pretty much defensive to Walmart, Kroger, Dollar Tree, uh, Dollar General, Kraft Heinz, um, Churchill. Um, so when you when you get these market moves, they're pretty swift the other way, right? This isn't very subtle. These are down 2% uh, pretty hard. If you only had a 10% gain going up, you've already given 20% of it back on one of these days. So just starting to look at what the market movers are doing two and three days into the rally can help. Now we have some other tools that we can use. And I'm just going to go click on this. I have an industry list that's all set up with just the, um, the U.S. sectors in it. And we can go look at this list. And the, the way I would typically want to do it is under performance. And what we can see here is here's the one day and the five day. And we're sorting on the one day, but we can sort on the five day. And, and the benefit of looking at this is this is telling us where the money's moving. So energy, semiconductors, materials are the ones coming out of the holes. The financials are trying to move. And again, we saw Citigroup and Bank of America there starting to perk up. So they actually had pretty good days on on this, I'll call it follow through day. This is four days after the low. And then energy um, wasn't quite as strong. Well, I guess just as strong as the financials. Technology was trying to turn up. So there's some good information here showing us that on the five day performance uh, and the, the one day performance, we're starting to try and figure out what's going on. And Again, as the rally starts, we might see more and more people gripping into the technology area. Energy was one of the top performers coming into this particular low. Sometimes that's technology, etc. So we want to kind of keep track of what has been happening. But technology has been one of the biggest sell-off areas and discretionary um, since the rally, uh, since, since the market top. They've sold off the hardest, and you see staples and utilities uh, are holding up okay. Now, again, they're not great, uh, but with the stock market down 20% for the S&P and the NASDAQ down 30%, these were flat year-to-date. So they were stable. They definitely outperformed the S&P 500, but again, you didn't really make any money. You just were flat. Now, over the 
over the last um, six months, those two areas have clearly been some of the best areas to be in. And that would suggest that they also started ramping up a little bit before the market topped. Um, so watching what is going on and where the market is moving is very, very helpful. And you can do that using some of these tools. And again, if you've just got a a chart list with all of the sectors in it that can help if you've got a chart list with ETFs in it or something like that you can use that so these different tools we can align with and try to um, educate ourselves as to how the market is going to turn now we also have another method and that is to take the US industry groups and just to, to take an example this is sorted based on um, the top performing at the top and the bottom performing um, on the day. And when we look through the bottom here, what we're expecting to see as a rally starts is all the defensive names selling off. So brewers, food retailers, soft drinks, beverages, right? These are all very cautionary areas of the market. Here's gold mining. And in particular, gold mining hasn't been doing very well since mid-April and has really fallen hard and it, it's been going down even though some of the other commodities have had a better ride. Now the one thing I would say here is when the market rotates from weakness or from, from staples and utilities into the other, you might get a few days to react but you don't get many days if it's going to be a pretty hard rally. So if you're playing in these areas, as the market starts to base out, you want to start to use tools um, to, to try and kick you out. So you want to have a stop in place. And let's just go to whatever uh, food retailers. Well, you see the chart, chart was working pretty well, and now it's starting to break here as of three or four weeks ago. I want one that's actually just breaking this week. Let's see if the brewers are a little better. So if, if this was going to hold up, this is fine. But what you really want to see is something that you can put a stop under it. And here I'm on a weekly chart. Go into the daily. And, you know, you probably want to draw a line under here. Or you can use a tool. I'm just going to change my chart settings, actually. Let's go up here to daily. And then you can use a tool like a candle glance. Or, or sorry, a, a chandelier stop. Uh, to try and kick you out. What this does is it draws a line under the chart and basically says if it closes below that level, you want to sell. And as long as it holds above that level, it's still okay. So if we did XLP and just said, you know, what's going on, it gave us a sell signal around the first part of May. And um, as I record this here, it's on the Tuesday, um, May 17th. So we're watching, and it still hasn't broken out back above this, so it's not suggesting um, that it's getting stronger. But one thing that's happened is they haven't gone down as the market kept falling. And now what we're looking for is, let's say, something like tech, uh, which has really been underperforming for a while here, if it could finally start turning up. Now, this isn't really a, a buy signal of sorts. Some people would like to think of it as that way. But as you come across here, this was briefly a buy signal, then a fail, then tried to be a buy signal, then held. It's not really designed as a buy signal. It's basically designed to kick you out. So as the market moves up, um, it will push you out. Again, if, if technology is the worst beaten down sector, we want to start to see it turn up. And so here's our PPO, and we can draw a trend line down here if this is going to start to turn higher. That's the kind of thing we'd like to see. So on these industry groups, and I'm just going to flip all the way back to the list, maybe, <laughs> um, here we go, uh, let's go to the top and see what's outperforming. And one of the things we're um, trying to get guidance on is, is the market going to rotate into tech and communications or consumer discretionary, or is it going to rotate into industrials and materials and energy where does the market want to go so again using um using these tools we can go look so here's non-ferrous metals and if we just highlight over that that is a huge pullback that was from let's call it 675 to 475 
roughly a 30% drop and then that would start to turn higher and non-ferrous metals are like copper and aluminum and that type of thing. And here's the airlines. They've been jogging sideways for six months, but they're trying to turn up as everybody expects travel and tourism to start to improve. Industrial metals, they look pretty much the same as non ferros but at least we have a, a reason to look at them differently. A different group, but same sort of price action. And you can see that they, um, you've got a base over on the left-hand side for much of 2021. Then it soared into 2022, and then it pulled back really hard during the market correction from April into May. And now you've got a 30% pullback, and these are starting to bounce out of the hole. So there's aluminum, here's semiconductors, and semiconductors got re hit really hard, um, in this case down about 30%, so they went from being one of the top performing industries to one of the bottom performers. And what I like to watch on these is your scooter ranking, if it gets really oversold below 25, I like it when it starts to head back up north of 25, and the reason I'm looking for that is I want to take stuff that's out of favor and it's compared to its peers using the scooter ranking. So if something is unloved and then starts to get some love in order to actually make the numbers move up, it has to be moving faster than a bunch of the other sectors. So it's got to actually turn up and start to change angles. So let's just click on this one. And um, here's my scooter ranking. And what you see here um, semiconductors are good because they don't uh, exhibit a lot of a lot of um, pullbacks and when they do they can be a pretty attractive entry so let's just go and put a horizontal line on here and I like to put one at 75 and one at 25 and I'll describe that in just a second but the idea being Here's your semiconductors, and would you have liked to have bought right in about here as it started to turn higher? That was pretty good, so um, you, you start to see that move up. Now we can use semiconductors, or we could use just the SMH, which is an ETF. Same idea, but you can see it hasn't been down here for three years, and now all of a sudden, if, it, if this was starting to turn up, this would be a pretty interesting place on the chart to get long. So using these tools, again, you could use the scooter ranking. We can use the, uh, the what groups are up the most right now. And here's the tire index, and it's jumping 4%, but it's still one of the worst performing indexes out there. So do you really want to own that? Well, it's not one of the ones that are most excited. I think what I'm surprised at here, and this is as we're trying to um, deal with high costs in in fuel right now because energy's been so strong uh, but here's automobiles automobile parts and transportation all starting to turn up and so i think that's a good clue and again we saw ford um, trying to turn up but looking at this automobiles index this index specifically tends to track tesla just because of tesla's market cap so um, the, these are just way different ways for us to go looking at the market and again this is a a list of stocks that or industry groups that you could make just um through the stock charts homepage. so um if you're not familiar with how to get either a, a list of these things set up let's just go and create a new scan and you're going to go down here to the bottom and you're going to say choose u.s sectors and industries and um, you can just click on this and then you can literally go and ask for all of these to get put into a chart list, or you can uh, go into uh, different types of universes of stocks together. Uh, so here's the semiconductor index as an example, and you can work your way up. It takes a little bit of time, but after you, you assemble the list, then you've got it all the time, and you can just go back and reflect. So again, if you just wanted all these different industries, you would just go in here and select these one at a time. You could select the communication services sector and add. And by doing that, it's going to put it up here. And then you're just going to get rid of this top line of information. And go here. And then you're going to go down and pick the next one. And again, we're just picking the headers. So we're going to go to consumer staples and add that. And then we're going to go down and pick... Um, the next one cyclicals you get the idea um, but we can build on all of these and then when we run this scan it's going to give us 
hopefully better data because I didn't do that right, obviously. Um, not sure why that had trouble. Group is run or I have to put the word or here. Um, okay, so anyway, we're going to add this and then run that scan. Now we've got a list of companies um, that are in there. So you could either do it by the companies or you could just do it by the actual industry names, depending on how you want to um, rotate through the market. So my, I would encourage you to um, try to get some of these things set up in advance. But to summarize again, what we want to look for is on the, as, as the market tries to make a low and come out of here, uh, we want to go and look and see what's starting to move. And um, I, I like to use my Schnell Strength Indexes to, to give me a clue when this is starting to turn. And as an example for the clients, um, I would have put out in the newsletter that Friday was a different day than we saw anywhere in the last six weeks. And so that's alerting us to a, to a change. And then all of a sudden we start to see the market now moving up higher and that means we want us to start, start taking positions in the market. Will it work out? We don't know that. What we do know is we've got a lot of the conditions that we like to see during the beginning of a rally. So we want to see consumer staples and utilities start to decline. We want to see growth names start to turn higher. And it's a matter of which ones on Like some rallies, it's going to end up being... Um, financials and then other rallies it might end up being energy or whatever you want to go and look for where that strength is and try and ride that out so hopefully this is as an overview just to um, help get you set up for the next market bottom uh, that you're ready and you're starting to watch as the market bottoms out so thank you for taking the time to join me um, I've got a little bit more here that I want to cover off and then um, and then we'll wrap that up but Again, take these components and try to use them together to help um, get yourself, first of all, set up. And then second of all, how can you read through the data and how can you parse the data to get more information? Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.